Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Beer Brother 214, The Time in Thieves. Uh, we're going to do the uh, usual appeals and things in a second. We're coming in, of course, in uh, Odyssey, uh, three timelines in Twitter, and you boob. Uh, but you, we're going to keep you boob very short today. I'm very upset, and I'll tell you later why. Why the term in thieves? Well, we were having a conversation with Thomas, and uh, uh, one of us said something like, the term in thieves will get to your stuff, no matter what security you arrange. Uh, the bottom line is, is if, if you have uh, Fort Knox in your house, well, you're going to be the one opening the door for them with a gun to your head if they want something that's inside. You see, uh, the tempting thief does not give a hoot about the law. Otherwise, there would, be th there would be thieves, would they? This is an axiom. Thieves don't care about the law. No piece of paper, however well written, will stop a thief from getting the prize. No alarm system, no cameras, no dogs, no risks, no, no US, law. No U.S. No, Constitution. No U.S. Constitution, nothing. Now, whether the thief aims to steal the contents of your safe to pay for, say, his mistress' wedding ring, or stick his filthy hand in your pockets to pay for somebody else's education, like some senile thief we all know, they will get it done. Worst of them, of course, are those who steal under the color of government. You know, Democrats. They use coercion to steal you blind in exchange for jobs for their family and friends, job stability for themselves, and a hefty retirement account to boot. Ask Senator Menendez or the Bidens. Why do I say they are the worst? Because they are charged with the preservation of our rights. They have access to tools no other thief can dream of because they're supposed to use them for the preservation of our rights. And they used these very tools and the trust that we deposited in them to rob us blind under, under penalty of jail. Every time somebody mentions social justice, fairness, or investment in the future, you know this. You're being robbed and your future is being raped. The term in little thieves that they are they will never stop until you banish them from office. In November, stop the thieves. And this is Sol Montes Bradley, the largest human repository of useless information, pontificating because, hey, well, I can. And uh, right up from still my golden cage in Florida, and right there, Thomas Victor, the only living expert in World War I flamethrowers, and savant extraordinaire, uh, <laughs> hey, do I take advantage of you and your knowledge? Yes, I do. Our conversations actually make me uh, connect the dots a hell of a lot easier. And um, from uh, California, the land where people are raped and stolen by the government more than any other land in this sorry United States. How are you doing, Thomas? Well, today we set a record. Um, thieves managed to break into a vault and steal $30 million in cash. Um, so it's apropos of the subject tonight. That, uh, right, but but if you buy a three hundred dollar door camera, you'll stop all the thieves, you know. Well, okay, I put up um, when my parents were alive. I'm living in my parents' house, my late parents' house. They put in a, a front door, um, like a, a security door. Because my mother would always fall asleep with the front door unlocked. She, there was a, a screen door, and 
the main door would close behind it and my mother hated air conditioning so in the summer this place would be i think the highest temperature i ever experienced here it was 95 inside the house yeah she would conk out um and you know anyone could just walk in so my father had this um security door installed and I always thought it didn't matter because the architecture of this place was such that there were a lot of very big windows. So when I moved in, I had security gates put on both doors and I had the, the windows covered with uh, water bars, but they're decorative bars. And whenever I see a house now, I always marvel at how vulnerable these things are, you know, like like, um, I, I'm going to have to leave California because, you know, it's, it's, it's completely out of control on, on all levels. And when I find a nice house, I'll probably end up in Las Vegas just because my last surviving family member with whom I have relations is there. And it's close enough to the California medical centers that I have to visit, um, so I'll probably end up in Vegas. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put up, you know, security gates and, and bars on the windows because um, we're at the point now with all these professional criminals that Biden has brought into the country. These are, these are ready-made um, home yes. crews, um, fraud crews, uh, uh, strong arm robbery crews. Uh, uh, squatter crews, like professional squatters, and this is this is an astonishing thing. Um, in New York City, the mayor was was very upset that people kept saying the subways were dangerous, and he was citing he was saying that that crime has fallen since 2019, and it's like, yeah, oh, shit. What, they stopped what, arresting them. Well, see, they're not arresting them and they're not recording the statistics. That's what California is doing. Um, you don't record something. It doesn't exist. Also, if crime is, is if this, Eric Adams, the mayor of New York City, said that the New York subway system is the safest in the world. Okay, well, why do you have the National Guard down there, like armed? Why do you have that? Hello, Mr. Mr. Adams? Um, I'm, I asked you a question. I, I, I'm trying to think, but I don't know what he would come up with. Because no. I like soldiers. I always like love to play war with my lead soldiers, so I like looking at them. Oh, I mean, this is, this is the weirdest thing, because as you and I were talking about last night, the Founding Fathers didn't envision absolutely lawless politicians, uh, an entirely lawless political party that will... I saw I saw a guy today on NBC News, and they were talking about Trump's Truth Social. And this guy was some, you know, Shark Tank type guy. I don't know. I'd never seen him before. He looked like he uh, he loved to hit the bottle. And he said, "Why are we even talking about Trump and Truth Social? It's a giant con, and he's conning the investors." Well, the whole point. When truth social the SEC asshole. Well, there's the thing. Trump isn't conning anybody. You can get all the information you need. People are buying into truth social. The main reason is there are speculators, but the second main reason is they're buying into it to support Trump. And there's no con there. But he said that Trump his entire business history has been one con after another and not a single enterprise he's ever been involved with has been honest that, and, that's not what his banks said well this is the, under oath this is the, the sort of lie that a five-year-old would tell and he was a big hit on twitter but but the people on twitter are, are paid or they're five years old mentally and emotionally it it i mean this is their big plan their their big demonization of trump yep 
Why? What else do they have? Well, today or yesterday, The Rock, that actor, he yeah. refused to endorse Biden, and he he got around his support of Trump by saying he's not going to endorse anyone. And he was one of those people who said that he had a responsibility to use his platform to, you know, blibbity blabbity blibbity. But he said he regretted endorsing Biden and that he wasn't going to endorse him this time around. And oh, good. well, he's Biden isn't getting the celebrity endorsements that he got. You know, um, he's no nobody wants to touch the son of a bitch with a ten foot pole. And okay, even even the press is now uh, uh, advertising Bidenisms. Yeah, yeah, and. I mean, we're, we're going to end up talking about, you know, the situation in the Middle East and the situation in Ukraine. And we have not heads demanding that we pull out of both situations because they don't concern us. Um, they concern us. I mean, if, if you like, if you like reasonable prices for things, And if you don't want to be paying fifty dollars uh, per gallon for for gasoline, um, they do concern us. They concern us. Oh, they they concern us in more ways than one. Exactly. They, I, I've been pointing out since six years ago uh, uh, the importance of Bab el Mandeb as, as the access from the Indian Ocean to the Mediterranean through the Suez Canal, and and the amount of trade that moves through that little strait uh, from Asia to Europe and on to the U.S. What people don't understand is the U.S. is the largest economic power in the world, which is the source of both our military prowess and our comfortable lives. And I cannot stress this enough. Our poor live better than the European middle class. Absolutely. Just, just to put it mildly. And, and I'm willing to defend that on debate with anybody. Anybody who thinks I'm full of shit, come here and I'll show you how life in Europe is miserable compared to life in the U.S. Now, that said, the reason that 5% of the world's population can produce 50% of the world's output is because we sell it, which is the source of both our power uh, militarily and economically. If our customers disappear, We're going to start shoving Caterpillars and Boeings, uh, Dell computers and whatever up our collective asses. We're going to have to eat them. We're going to be without fruit from a number of countries. We're going to be uh, without clients for our industrial goods. Yes, the U.S. is still the largest industrial power in the world, schmucks. And our life will become instant misery. It's going to make the Great Depression look like a walk in the park. So, yes, we do have. And, and if that isn't in the national security interest, I don't know what the hell it is. Well, also, I don't understand this notion that you let... You let countries wreak havoc globally when you can stop them in a matter of weeks or hours or hours I, i i mean what is what is the big deal nobody these people they they don't give a shit about you know the lives of of the people over there they just have this this ide fix this this point of principle that, that the U.S. should not be involved ever under any circumstances. Well, because every fascist, every authoritarian little creep in the history of authoritarian little creeps had to put the, 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 the let's say, had to give 
the people, a foreign enemy to hate, to overlook their own misery and their own incompetence. In Cuba, there isn't shit. Nothing. No medicines, no food, no construction materials. People in Cuba leave a life of subsistence barely. The fault is not the utter incompetence of the communists that have been raping Cuba since 1959. No, the culprit is the U.S. blockade. Try to argue with people that there is no U.S. blockade and has never been. That Cuba can freely trade with the entire fucking planet, except with the U.S., where only limited uh, 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 fields are out of the embargo, like food and medicine, which they get from us free by the shipload. Yeah. But hatred for the U.S. gives the authoritarian creeps in Cuba a tool to convince the imbeciles, or rather the ill-fed imbeciles in the islands, that it's not our incompetence, it's them big bad wolves who do it. The same thing happens with jihad. The yeah. fixation with the West, with the US, has nothing to do with the fucking Crusades, most of whom don't know shit about anyway. Oh, nobody does. It, and it has everything to do with finding somebody, somebody nobody knows anything about, somebody most cannot place in a map, somebody most have had no interaction with, and blame them for all our ills, so that we don't look so bad. Which is from, from a tiny satrap in a sub-Saharan shithole to the Sandinistas in Nicaragua, they will pick the U.S. because they're powerful and they're easily uh, sold as the big bad wolf who keeps our shit. Well, the, the funny thing about all this is that if, if we adopt... If we adopt the policies that we keep hearing that we should adopt, then it's going to lead to absolute chaos. I mean, we're late to the party when it comes to Ukraine. The, the Norwegians, the Norwegians announced today that, that they're going to basically double the size of their armed forces and their, their weapons productions. Um, they're not doing this, you know, to feed the military industrial complex. They're doing this because they know that a war with Russia is is more. Yeah, the, the Scandinavians are now the most militaristic people in the world. Well, okay. Holy fuck! We're hearing all this screeching about how uh, uh, getting NATO in or getting uh, Ukraine into NATO is going to cause World War Three. No. <laughs> What's going to happen is that Ukraine will join NATO. NATO will send troops that will stop the Russian advance yep. and the Russian bombardments. Okay? They won't attack Russia. They will stop the war and they will prevent the Russians from, you know, what people don't understand. The from, Russians. From continue. For instance, the destruction of Kharkiv, where right. as we speak, they're right. robbing the living shit out of civilians, and I don't hear any of these fuckers of who, who cry me a river over, you know, some, some fucking moron who goes to cook in a war zone. Uh, but they're not saying anything about the hundreds and hundreds of children and mothers and grandparents who are being obliterated by the uh, indiscriminate bombardment of Kharkiv. Right. Uh, and so carried out right now as we speak. The whole point of having Ukraine and NATO is to stop all that. And Ukraine has signed multiple deals with multiple weapons 
manufacturers. The Ukrainians will build up their own armed forces. And at some point in the future, the Ukrainians will take back what the Russians have taken from them. And NATO will not be involved in that war because it will not be a defensive war. Um, every, every day, Thomas, every one of God's beautiful days, there is an imbecile somewhere claiming that at the moment that Ukraine joins NATO, they're going to invoke Article 5 and we're all going to be involved in a shooting war with the Russians. Ah! No. Uh, no. And, and I have one word for these imbeciles. Germany. Yeah. When Germany, one of the original, uh, uh, well, not original, but one of the early members of NATO joined NATO, fully 25% of Germany was occupied by the Soviets. Yeah, the capital city was uh, half occupied by the Soviets. Right. And, and, and fully 25% of the territory. The capital city was surrounded by the occupied territory. And you didn't see Article 5. Why not? Because Germany could only invoke Article 5 if the territory under their control when they entered NATO was attacked. Well, don't forget, it was not called Germany. It was called West Germany. Yes. It was called West well, Germany. When the, the, the Republic of Germany. Uh, when, as opposed to the Democratic Republic of Germany. When I went to, uh, on my aborted trip to Greece in 1981, 1980, it's all there. Is that the one where, where you had an encounter with the Romanians? Uh, well, I had an encounter with with uh, passport thieves in Yugoslavia. Oh, who, Yugoslavia. Yeah. That, that, they use that Soviet um, knockout gas, and um, they knocked me out and stole my passport, slipped my shirt, took my, my I had my security bag tucked into my shirt, and uh, um, the Greek police sent that back to me about a year later, and everything was still in it except for the traveler's checks and the passport and the cash, but... Um, I got on the wrong train. The, the Yugoslavs gave me the Yugoslavian secret police, the UBDA. Um, no, UDBA. UDBA or UBDA. I can't remember which. The Oompa Loompas. The Oompa Loompas. They gave me, um, I had to leave the, 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 the country by midnight, and they gave me that deadline at about five in the afternoon. Lovely. And I made it to the border with about 15 minutes to spare, but I was exhausted in depressed and I got on the wrong train and I started heading into um, uh, I was heading into East Berlin and you know it, it was like that 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 was all I mean there's movies there's movies there's one made in 1984 about you know checkpoint Charlie and and all of this stuff so that all existed up until 1989 I was at checkpoint Charlie oh you, you I, were, I crossed through or, the Brandenburg gate People forget this. Yeah. And, and the point is, Germany could jolly well join NATO. Well, you know, 25% of its territory and half its capital were occupied by the Soviets. Uh, and that didn't trigger Article 5, but that did stop the Soviets from further encroaching into Germany. Well, this is the thing that... that Everybody expected, I mean, everybody knew that if the, if the, the Soviets tried to, you know, the, the writer Tom Clancy wrote a novel, the, the one that put him on the map was called Red Storm Rising, and it was about a war between the West and the Soviet Union, and he, he gave them way the hell too much credit, um, but today... They have a guy in charge who's worse than any of the the, the premiers who we had to deal with. Um, yeah, say say what you what you will about Brezhnev, but at least he wasn't insane. Well, see, I, I learned something recently that I I didn't know, and that Putin practices this this 
perversion of the Russian Orthodox Church that posits that Russia is the center of the universe. Yep. That Russia has a divine right given to it by God to rule the world. And, 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 it, and it is the center of Christianity and the keepers of the faith. Exactly. And that the only way that, that, that Russia, I mean, basically it's no different um, than either the Houthis or Al Qaeda, the, the Islamic State, and yeah. you know the 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 Europeans. I mean, nobody can accuse today's Europeans of being warlike, and oh hell no, they've had the hell scared out of them, and so the the one by one now they're all starting to. Um, yeah, except except for the French, as long as the enemy is a sub-Saharan country with no more than two million people and no weapons. Exactly. So we're seeing country after country in Western Europe and in Eastern Europe, formerly the Eastern Bloc. They're they're reneging their sign their signatories or yep. their their sig. They they they. They were until this week uh, uh, signatories of of the. Um, oh God, I'm I'm having Iraq creeping the, into my mind. The uh, treaty, status of forces agreement, but no, it's a it's a limitation yeah, of so conventional forces. The size of their armed forces, and they have to um, inform the Russians where their units are in. Countries are pulling out of that treaty yep. because they don't want any, pulled out. They they don't want any sort of cap on um, the mm -hmm. size of their forces, and they also are no longer going to be telling the Russians where their their troop units are stationed. Yep. So um, no, notice that even Turkey is pulled out. Exactly, and that's because. If and if the balloon goes up, then the Russians are going to try and and basically force their way into the Black Sea, and the yeah. Turks are the 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 gatekeepers of the Black Sea. And yeah, um, I I think I told you in private a little over a year ago that I had in London a meeting with a top advisor to Erdogan that I I interviewed in order to. Uh, uh, obtain information as to how Erdogan viewed some things. And they were kind enough to, to share it with me. And, and he was telling me the worst things they can negotiate with Putin. Now, remember at this time, uh, Turkey was uh, uh, acting as a midwife for agreements for uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, grain exports and all that jazz. And, and he told me none of this is going to work because Putin does not want peace. He thrives in conflict. Of course. For as long as there is conflict in Ukraine, in Chechnya, in, in Nagorno-Karabakh, he thrives because his popularity derives from his uh, uh, discourse on, on this uh, crisis and his defense of Russian uh, hegemony. So don't expect Putin to back down. Don't expect Putin to negotiate in good faith. He will continue to stir the pot for as long as he's able, because that is what's keeping him in power. Well, also, the Russians who support Putin, they, 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 in their minds, the only way that Russia can show its greatness is through military conquest. Yeah. And... It's it's as simple as that. We're we're dealing because because God knows they have nothing else. Not in, they don't have military prowess, but they think they do. But yep. they they don't have a, 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 an advanced uh, industrial base. Their agriculture is shit. Their technology is half a century old. Oh, easily. They, they have nothing. They no, lived almost exclusively off of the export of oil and gas, and that is now uh, clipped. Well, this is the thing that that in the face of 
Okay, I mean, at some point, the, we're going to resume supporting Ukraine. Um, I don't know if this standoff is going to go all the way to the election, but um, in the meantime, the Ukrainians have developed a very effective strategy of demolishing the Russians' ability to fuel their their military the, 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 the infrastructure yes and they've they've built the longest range drones in human history their their drones uh the, basically 1400 miles well basically they took there's a there's a, a ukrainian version of of the cessna the cessna whatever it is 72 and they've converted that to a drone that isn't isn't piloted by um, a guy looking at a screen and, uh, and using a joystick. It's piloted by piloted by artificial intelligence. Yep. And this is how you put in the coordinates and let it fly. Exactly. And these things have flown the length of Russia, and um, the Russians seem absolutely powerless to stop them. In in you know this is something that that it's working. It's uh, and and there are people who oppose this, but Zelensky Zelensky made the point that since you know he said if you're not going to give us any more weapons and ammunition, then we have to do this our own way. If you want us to stop this, then resume the shipments of weapons and ammunition. People said. He's trying to blackmail us. No, they're not. They're trying to survive. No, it's, it's, l listen, we, we, because this is the U.S. doing it, have deprived the Ukrainians of air defense. Yeah. That was our part of the deal. The Europeans are, are cranking up, uh, 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 you know, uh, ammunition, and uh, um, armored vehicles, that they're, they're doing what they can and they're upping the ante every week almost. From England to, to Norway, from Finland to Czechia, from Italy to uh, 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 Sweden, all of them are pitching in. Germany is pitching in, God forbid. And the US, you know, it's kind of like trickling aid uh, because a, Biden has purposely mm -hmm. mined any attempt to fund Ukraine by attaching it to something the Republicans cannot possibly fucking vote for, like legalizing every legal in the country or some shit like that. You know, if Biden wants the Republicans to vote for Ukraine aid at the very time that they consolidate the openness of the U.S. border. It's madness. It's not going to happen. Thank you very fucking much. Good night. Then they blame the Republicans for the debacle in Ukraine. I, I think the Republicans are powerless in this game. If Biden controls it, I do happen to believe that a clean bill to uh, uh, continue the 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 Leasland agreement with Ukraine would result in massive amount of air defense units going over there. And I think that there is an ample majority in both houses of Congress for this. But only if it comes without, oh, but you have to legalize our policy in the border. It's not yep. going to happen. The Republicans are playing second fiddle in all of this because, hey, they don't control uh, the Senate and uh, there's nothing they can do without the leadership of the Senate on board. No, oh, and, and you know, people need to understand this country went through two wars with, with Britain a civil war um, and two world wars. So wars happen, and the last okay, 
the sort of war that the world is used to, or it's called transnational wars, where you have different nations fighting each other. Since the end of World War II, we've had the fewest transnational wars in human history. Yep. So we've had it really, really, really good. And that has made people think that we should never be involved in wars. And, you know... And, and it's the other way around. The reason we had so few is because the U.S. projected power and nobody wanted to mess with the pool. Exactly. And John McCain isn't somebody who I supported, but he once said something very profound. He said, it's not a choice between war and peace. It's a choice between war and something much worse than war. And in this case, um, if we sit back and, you know, if we allow the Russians and the Iranians to do whatever the fuck they want, then the situations are going to spin out of control and they're going to last for many, many, many oh, years. And you're going to see uh, the European and American economies collapse. Well, that's the thing. Israel is, is having a lot of economic trouble. And this is a war that the, the, the Israelis have no choice in fighting. Mm. Biden's, Biden's ultimatum came at a really bad time for Biden because... You know, he's he's had to quietly withdraw it because, you know... Um, the next day, the day following this imbecile's ultimatum, Hamas rejected the ceasefire agreement in Doha. Exactly. I mean... It, it, every Boy Scout knows that you cannot help an old lady cross the street if she doesn't want to. And... Hamas does not want a two-state solution. It does not want a ceasefire. It wants the total annihilation and elimination of the state of Israel, well, including every Jew, every Muslim, and every Christian with an Israeli passport. Well, they also want the death of every Jewish person in the world. Um, and they're quite clear about this. Um, now, it's really interesting We we are credited with killing Soleimani, the head of the Quds Force, and the Israelis have killed somebody who is nowhere near the statue of... No, but, but he was Soleimani's successor. Right. And so the Israelis are... Or sorry, the Iranians are making threats, the sort of threats against Israel that they didn't make against us. Well, they did make it against us, but then they... they they launched some pitiful bombing that, that you know... Um, yeah, they dusted up some sand in Iraq. So, initially they told the Swiss that the missiles, the ballistic missiles were going to begin flying within 24 to 48 hours. hours. And now they're saying, well, we'll attack when we want to. Right. Um, uh, the the Mullahs have one problem. And it's an unsolvable problem. Israel have missiles that can hit any part of Iran. You and bet. the Iranians have zero to stop them. Yeah. Period. If the Iranians were to launch an attack against Israel, they would do very little damage in Israel, and they would have a barrage of precision missiles blowing up their facilities throughout Iran. They cool. know this. They don't want this. They're shitting the, their pants at the very idea of it. Remember that the mullahs are the most cowardly little fuckers in mankind. And they don't want this. So they threaten. But if you call their bluff, they fold. Also, for the the... the for the entire time that there's been a a, um, a counter to the mullahs, a re, you know, I don't want to use the term resistance, that's been spoiled, yeah. an opposition to the mullahs, all those people always told us that they wanted to do it themselves and they didn't yes. want us to, say, decapitate their leader, the, the mullahs' leadership. 
now they're saying blow the hell out of the mullahs and we'll do the rest yes so well, remember what i said in this show months ago we, we need to obliterate hamas hezbollah the houthis every iranian-backed militia in iraq syria and jordan and then we need to bomb the living fuck out of every military facility in Iran. We don't need to invade. We don't need to send troops. No. We need to send B-29s and B-1As and blow the crap out of Natanz, out of their naval ports, out of their uh, 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 Revolutionary Guard facilities, and then let the Iranians do their voodoo. What's what's amazing to me is that all the opposition okay, this is this is the weirdest thing. You have the people who support the Ukrainians but not the Israelis. You have the people who support the Israelis but not the Ukrainians. You have the people who oppose both of them, and then the people who support both funding Ukraine and helping Israel, people like you and I, um, we're, we're like, you know, we're a, a tiny minority. And yeah. all, of, all of this opposition arises from pure ignorance of, of everything. Absolutely. You people saying that we're sending money to you. We're sending all our money to Ukraine. Well, if we're dying. If we were sending all our money to Ukraine, then the Ukrainians would have won this thing a year ago. Um, they would have they would have paid for a foreign air force to, to <laughs> bring in their own planes. They would have bought uh, Putin's. <laughs> oh yeah, they would have bought Putin's uh, uh, seconds. First for each of you, how do you you know? No questions asked. No Just, questions asked. Here's a check. Vladimir Putin. Yeah, bring me Putin's balls in a tiny box. Yeah. Um, no, we, we haven't sent a dime to the Ukrainians. Uh, what we send to the Israelis is part of an exchange, because the, the deal with Israel is two ways. They have done enormous work to improve our weapons. And we benefit from it. They have done enormous work to keep the trade routes open for us. And we've benefited enormously from that. But one thing, regardless of those, of those folks that you were talking about, people who support Ukraine but not Israel, they don't realize it's the same situation, you schmucks. Russia, Iran, and China are allies in this. The people doing war against Ukraine are the same as the people doing war against Israel. You can't separate the two. And we are the ultimate target in both cases. I saw something from Donald Trump Jr. who sometimes seems to be in another planet complaining that allowing now uh, Ukraine into NATO will start World War III, and that's what they want. Oh, for crying out fucking loud. Number one, it, 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 it's not now. It's a process that started two years ago, courtesy of Putin. And a year ago, NATO already established that Ukraine is on a fast track to become a full member. And in the meantime, during the in the coordinating uh, group, which means they're already a junior partner in NATO, and they have been for a year. Number two, all the conditions imposed on Ukraine mean that there is no Article Five for land that is already occupied by the Russians. So what 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 is this bullshit? Well, I, it's just, I mean, you know, I haven't seen the comments, um, but obviously the Europe, you know, 
again, this notion, it, it, is Ukraine controlling the minds of all the Europeans? I mean, Apparently. It's, it's the Europeans who want Ukraine in, in NATO. It, it's the Europeans who didn't want Ukraine in NATO until the Russians started Invited. off, you know, this, this ridiculous um, expansionist stunt. And the Europeans are, are adult people capable of making their own decisions. And if they want, if they want, Ukraine in, in NATO, it's not because they want a war with Russia. They want to basically prevent Russia they from... They want to prevent the war with Russia. Right. The, the, the Russians are very open about their plans to take back Poland, take back the Baltic. Latvia. Yeah, I mean, people, people don't understand that... Okay, in World War II, we chose the Soviets instead of Hitler. But the Soviets were, you know, one could argue just as bad as Hitler. Um, they weren't necessarily race-based, but for all practical purposes, they were. And their, 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 their answer to everything was murder, mass murder. And they held people in an iron grip since 1917, uh, say 1920. And, yeah. and, and they tried to exterminate these people's languages. They, they, they closed down their churches. They, um, they, they killed millions. And everybody talks about the millions Hitler killed. And he did. Stalin doesn't lag behind Hitler on this one. In Ukraine alone, there were about 7 million dead when he tried to collectivize, uh, nationalize uh, the land and collectivize the farms. And Ukraine, which was not a country of serfs, which made it easy uh, for Stalin to, to uh, collectivize the farms in, in in Russia, because you know he he just changed uh, the, the the feudal lord for the commissar and continued business as usual. But in Ukraine, Ukraine was a country of human farmers. It was the closest fucking thing to Massachusetts on that part of the planet, and they weren't about to give up their lands and accept the commissar. So he killed seven million, deported another three million, and repopulated that part of eastern Ukraine with uh, 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 schmucks from Belarus and 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 the um, the southern lands of of Russia, uh, the Caucasus mostly. Uh, wh why the fuck? Are we not even talking about this? Well, nobody knows. Because um, the whole of the war is like, it, it, it's no different than the Holocaust. I watched uh, a very grueling movie. It was a dramatization, but it was a true story. It was about Polish army officers who had been captured in 1939 and sent to Siberia. And... Eight of them escaped and um, walked 4,000 miles from Siberia to India. And there, I don't know how much was dramatized. One of them was an American citizen of Finnish ancestry. And he parted company with the, uh, with the, uh, the Poles before... Um, they got to their, their destination and he survived too. But eventually only only two, no, three Polish officers made it to India. But um, the, 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 the thing about this, the original plan was to go to Mongolia, but when they arrived in Mongolia, they, they, there was this huge gate 
at the border, and it was the the, the social the the Soviet Socialist Republic of Mongolia. They were communists, and so they made a detour around Mongolia, and they ended up in India. And this took I think they arrived in India in 1941, I believe. And these these men eventually, after they recovered, they fought on various you know free Pol in various free Polish units. Um, and they all survived the war, and then they they returned to Poland. Where, when when did the Poles throw communism off? Eighty nine, ninety, something like that. Yeah, it, it, it was after the Solidarity Movement. Uh, it started earlier than the demise of the Soviet Union, probably one of the factors that led to it. But it it it, it took form in eighty nine. Right. So. They eventually got back to Poland just in time to like die as old men, but it it this movie really really showcased as well as they could the savagery of the Soviets and the savagery that that you know Vladimir Putin has reintroduced and well he was trained in it. Well, I guess the worst part for me. Um, there was a scene in which, okay, the the men in in the the Soviet, in the the Siberian Gulag, they were woodcutters, and the guards took them out in the middle of a blizzard, and nobody knew what to do. The guards didn't want to go back without their quota of wood, and the American, the Finnish American, sort of saved everybody's lives by by having them shelter in the woods and they all survived they they built these these lean twos and survived mm -hmm. and then the next day the american and all the men who'd worked on the the lean twos were sent into the coal mines and initially the american hadn't wanted to um escape but he said, you know, we're not going to survive six months down here. So that's when they escaped. They uh, they shorted out the generator. And when all the lights went out, they made it through the, the barbed wire. But, um, I mean, think about it. Wood cutting, coal mines. I mean, just, just, and, and. Forced labor. All these gulags were run by all the professional criminals. The, yes. The, the yeah, and, and by the way, people think that, that the Nazis invented concentration camps. No. No, the Soviets did. The Soviets did. I mean, the... the so, somebody here in the chat is saying, who were the gulags? And, and it's a fun thing you just mentioned, the gulags, because before the, the Soviets uh, and after the fall of the Tsar in 1905, the, there was an incipient, uh, an effort to to turn Russia into a, a Western democracy. It failed miserably. The the guy leading the effort was weak as shit. Uh, during that time, they freed serfs and gave them uh, property of the land they were working on, and they created a class of yeoman farmer. Of, of, of farmers who owned the land, their work. These were the kulaks. And of course, then came Stalin with his idea of uh, uh, collectivizing the farms. And these guys who had tasted a little bit of prosperity as, as a new class of uh, 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 farmer with property of the land, kulak, uh, weren't too enthused about it, uh, so they ended up in the gulags, uh, in concentration camps, uh, working the mines in Siberia uh, to, to feed the, the incipient industry of the Soviets. So, it, every time you turn, you see a crime. My grandfather, who had a romanticized idea of the Soviets because he was from an area of Poland that was uh, uh, twice occupied 
by Germany, the second time by the Nazis, and both times so-called liberated by the Soviets, he went to visit the Soviet Union in the 1950s. He was a delegate to the Peace Conference of Helsinki, and after that, he, he went to China and to the Soviet Union. When he went to the Soviet Union, he went to visit the relatives that he had left in what is now, uh, and his wives, in what is now Belarus and Moldova. He came back with such an impression that he created an organization called the uh, Movement 19th of April, the 19th of April Movement. Uh, 19th of April was the anniversary of the uprising of the Warsaw Ghetto. That should tell you the idea. And he spent his own fortune and worked the rest of his life until he died in the 70s, helping Jews escape the Soviet Union. Now, this is a guy, I insist, that didn't look poorly upon the Soviet Union. He didn't know what, some, what things were done there. He only knew that his town was rescued uh, uh, by the Red Army uh, from the savage Germans. But then he dedicated his entire life to get Jews out of that hellhole. The crimes that the Soviet Union committed against all kinds of people are yet to be catalogued. Well, much of what we think we know about World War II is actually Soviet propaganda. Yes. This propaganda has... I mean, the, the, the Democrats are, are doing Soviet and Putin-esque propaganda in that they're just saying stuff. And it works in Russia because they have no other, a lot of the population has no other information outlet. It doesn't work here because we can see, okay, A, um, I mean, I don't know how, when, when the Russians who were living in the literal mud and they're, they're being told, you know, you have it better than you've ever had and they believe it. Um, but here, I mean, you know, we have the Democrats telling us that, you know, what you, what you are seeing, what you are paying, what you are no longer receiving, all of that is, is a hallucination. No, 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 no. It's a contribution to save the planet. Well, but now they don't even admit to it. They don't. They don't say your high food prices are saving the planet. They say your food prices are just, you know, they're yeah, they're. The same they always buy. Yeah, high. true. That that that's the new the new impetus of these idiots. That's true. And and also when it comes to crime, they're just doing what the mayor of New York is doing. They're saying it's a lie. It's not happening. And now there's there's female celebrities who are getting randomly punched in the face in New York City. And, and you know, I mean, this is, this is, this is one of these, these moments in, in history where madness sweeps the culture. And it's not sweeping all the culture. It's only sweeping half of the culture. And, you know, we'll, we'll come out of it. We always do. But it's just, it's one of those really frustrating American moments where it was like, yeah. why did we have to experience this? Like, like it's literally like somebody heading toward a wall socket with a butter knife and you tell them, don't do that. You're going to get electric. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 so, it's happened in the past too. You are correct. These are, these are it, things that happened to us. What you're talking about and I'm not going to get electrocuted or they say nobody has ever stuck a butter knife into the wall socket the right way before and i'm going to do it the right way never with this hand yeah so i don't know it's it's just one of these really bizarre moments where you you i mean there's no i'm, I'm waiting for some asshole to suggest prohibition well 
and and even that, I mean, okay, prohibition empowered the the mafia, and then when they withdrew prohibition, and they 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 made states in charge of of booze. In a lot of places, like okay, when I lived in Tyler in Texas, it 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 was and it may still be a dry county. Yeah. So, what was the number one money making scheme in Tyler? Was smuggling. Smuggling in booze. I mean, my my dad and all his friends drank. Um, it, it was just it was ridiculous. Um. I don't know. It, 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 it is absurd, and, and, and they do it. By the way, we speak of the Democrats, but let's not leave out of the craziness. Uh, Zapato is mentioning them in the chat. Uh, Conservative Inc., uh, the Gateway Pundit, the Lettuce Peddler of a Conservative Treehouse, an asshole who was a supervisor of the Lettuce section in a Publix in Florida. Now he's a fucking expert of everything writing against Ukraine and Israel. Uh, Cocker Talson, a fucking collectivist who, who, who has mini orgasms every time he talks about Putin and, and who tells us how wonderful life is in Russia and how well stocked their supermarkets are because he's a fucking imbecile. All of these people are pushing the same narrative as the Democrats. It, it's it's like a one-two punch on reason. Yeah. Of course, I don't think they're conservatives or Republicans at all. I think that anybody who displays their collectivism is ipso facto written off the conservative uh, 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 field. Period. Uh, but they do it, and they do it all the time. Well, it's, I just don't understand this notion that the world will just somehow work if we let expansionist terrorist regimes do whatever the fuck they want. Yes. Like, their goal, I mean, their, their stated goal is to destroy us. And now that they have alleged global powers like China behind them, yeah. you know, they can do a hell of a lot of damage. And, and we're always being told to, that, well, it's, it's not, we're always being told that, that we have to change somehow. And it's like, no, we don't. No, don't. We just have to pound these people into the ground until they stop doing what they're doing. That's all. Yes. And, and, and if you ask me, that includes Greta Thunberg. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just, it's easy. Uh, okay, um, the electric car is basically dead. The, the Chinese, the Chinese electric car market is, I, I heard it described as cooling off. It's dead. Yes. Now, now they're trying to open up markets in the U.S. with Chinese electric cars. <laughs> no, I mean it, all the all the the the, the car companies that, that were going to get rid of all their internal combustion engines and and they're they, backpedaling they, now. They swept. The, they've they fired everybody in the electric car division. And you know, um, in the meantime, like, have you seen the prices of some of these? These classic old cars, people are willing to pay a hundred grand for, for cars that, you know, were probably... I, I, bought a, I bought a car. I told you about this. I bought it used. I paid $16,000 for it two years ago. Today, they offer me twenty five. Yeah. This is fucking insane. No, oh, you... My brother has cars... Um, he's got a 1975 GMC Jimmy, and we've had to cover that thing with a tarp because there everybody were people... was stopping by and asking, "Can I buy it?" Oh no! This is my neighbor. I'm sorry. Yeah, quite all right. Let, let me let me see if I can keep the candle lit for a second uh, while Thomas returns.
Uh, I'll put it back on screen as soon as he's back. But but yeah, Kerry says uh, uh, Kelzilla Bay. Kerry wants fewer farms, and there is talk of banning private gardens. Well, this is the shit that uh, the European Union calls Agenda 2030, uh, which is created uh, 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 quite a stir in Europe, where farmers driving their tractors into downtown Paris, Madrid, Barcelona, Bonn, Berlin, um, and and literally. Uh, showering uh, cow pies at government buildings uh, because essentially they are uh, uh, Agenda 2030 talks about reducing farmland by 50% uh, which means A, that one of every two farmers in Europe uh, will be uh, out of a business and out of a life uh, in the next uh, what six years and the other one is that food production in europe is going to drop uh, like a rock now of course uh, to compensate for this they're having free trade agreements with say morocco uh, to import food from morocco because you know the planet will be saved by transferring food production from say uh holland or murcia to Morocco. How does that work? One plus one equals two. It doesn't matter whether the one is located here or there. And this is the lunacy that idiots like Kerry, who's a Francophile, who would love to be French and has spent a, most of his life trying to become one, a, I think he succeeded. Uh, they, they had to do a little surgery to reduce the size of his brain. Uh, they didn't find much, though. This is insanity. So Agenda 2030 wants to eliminate uh, the uh, gas gasoline engine. It wants to eliminate farming. Oh, so they want us to die? of malnutrition in place. It's not going to happen. Long before the last touches are done to the Agenda 2030, people are going to rise up like a 40-foot wave, like a fucking tsunami, and destroy all of this shit. There is going to be a popular uprising because eventually it's going to hurt like shit. In the meantime, it's been hurting in, uh, in, in, in a periodically increasing manner. Today, you're paying for electricity twice what you would pay without this stupid legislation out there. The legislation in the U.S. that closed the entry to any coal uh, 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 generating plant, including clean coal, which is no pipe dream, uh, did nothing but increase the cost of electricity. The policies that they have adopted have increased the cost of gas uh, and gasoline and oil products. And that means an increase of the cost of anything from the clothes you're wearing to the medicines you take to the cost of your transportation to the cost of keeping your ass cool in summer. And it's only going to continue to go up until you cry uncle. I believe that long before their targets are met, either the entire system is going to collapse because there's nothing to replace what they are eliminating, or people are going to rise up in anger and throw the bombs out one way or the other. And Thomas is back, so I'm going to stop blabbering. Well, you know, I'm my neighbor is only like six years older than me, but She's like the little old lady who I have to, I have to take care of. <laughs> and it's like, who takes care of me? <laughs> you know, <laughs> she's always having these emergencies that require that I go over and re and How old is your neighbor? Let's see, I'm 61. She's 67. 67. 60. <laughs> Good. A trader in for 133 and 134 year old, both of which with the express 
mandate to take care of you? Well, unfortunately, um, the way California is right now, I mean, there's absolutely no way that, that any any sort of helper is getting into my house. It's like No, uh, no, no, I'm not talking about helpers, darling. Uh, let them be some uh, blood blue eyed bombshells from Ukraine. They'll I, take care of you. Yeah, but I mean I, I watch a lot of true crime shows and, <laughs> and uh some of these women, I mean, they, they are they are black widows, let me tell you. Yes, uh, true. So it's like uh, they've uh, they've been conditioned to like not not uh, not really hold human life in in much esteem. So no, I'm I'm uh, I'm gonna be taking care of myself till the bitter end, but that's all right. Um, I'll, I'll do what Ernest Borgnine did. He lived to be in his 90s, and then he said, to hell with this, and he went into hospice, and he was gone in a couple of days. So, mm. um, <laughs> Oh, well. Uh, let, let me tell you, because I, I was blubbering out uh, while you were taking care of, of, of your caretaker. And um, QBW and Zapato are answering it, which I, 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 I think it's kind of a... They get it. Uh, QBW, uh, the multi-millions of dollars that the Canadian government has gifted Ford and Stellantis for building EV batteries seem to be going up in smoke as the companies are having second thoughts about their futures. Duh. And Zapato, sounds like the great leap forward pushed by China to force industrialization and result in a massive famine. But now to push the Green New Deal crap, Agenda 2030, is it? Agenda 2030 is the name in Europe for the Green New Deal, except that in Europe, they actually codified it. Not in, in, in the country's legislatures, where it wouldn't fly because people would never allow it, but the bureaucrats who control the European Union you know, the ones that if I don't win it by vote, I'll impose it by fiat. Well, those guys are imposing the Agenda 2030. It's a weapon of mass destruction. I it's a weapon of economic destruction. I want to see the Europeans take on the Russians while the Europeans are driving electric tanks. That should be pretty fun to watch. No, excuse us. We must... We must yeah, I saw this Norwegian movie, and the 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 climax of the movie was a, a an elderly ex soldier breaking out of the old folks' home to go save his son, and he stole an electric car, and he was he had no idea how to start it. It was a keyless start, and and he was just like you know he was hysterical the more, and finally uh, he got like a low a low energy and and. He had no idea. He was he was looking around on the car where to fill it, and, yeah. and it shows you know somebody explained to him that it was electric, and he's filming it. He's he's got it hooked up. And he's just like swearing, you know these these remarkably obscene sort of uh, condemnations of electric cars and those who drive them. Yeah. And, uh, and, and condemnation of electric cars. Biden does not want to replenish the oil reserve the yeah. strategic oil reserve yeah because we're not going to need it we're going to have everything electric they hold on a second guys well, somebody says here in the home sweet home hi lisa uh, hold on a second ceasefire while we recharge yeah, uh, yeah. Can, can can you imagine and and they want the U.S. armed forces to bring electric to the 30-40% level of their fleets? This is suicide. It's suicide and it's, it's not possible. I mean, the, the grid in California is, is teetering on collapse so much so that, that last summer they... they they put out a, a an order, a, a state order. You know, don't don't charge your electric cars, or the grid will go down. It's like, but, but you just told everybody they have to buy electric cars because 
you're going to outlaw uh, the internal combustion engine. I mean, in in Spain, they told everybody to buy uh, uh, solar panels and install them in their lands. Stop producing lettuce. Stop producing tomatoes. We can buy those from Morocco, you know. Let's uh, cover the fields with solar panels. And the state will guarantee you the purchase of the electricity you produce to the tune of so much per year so that your future is guaranteed that you're, you're producing energy now. Well, of course, they couldn't connect it to the grid. So it never even made a dent. And the state ran out of money. So it stopped making the payments, the purchases, and the subsidies so that people got stuck with their lands covered with solar panels, which are very expensive to dispose of. And in some cases, you know, the panels were destroyed uh, by, by weather events. But the point is that everybody got royally fucked. There are thousands of lawsuits. My brother bought electric panels because, or solar panels, because he was told that that you know the 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 company would buy whatever yeah. he was producing. They can't. Well, also those things are breaking down constantly. Las Vegas is a dust bowl, so they get so dusty that 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 you have to clean them off. He'd, he has to go up on his roof constantly to to maintain his solar panels. It's like it's demented. I, I he regrets every second of, of owning them because there's always something wrong with them. Yes. Um, and and it doesn't work. And no, you cannot supply. We we've explained it a gazillion times, but I'm sorry. the The electricity distribution system is a one way street, assholes. Yeah. Mm. You, you don't have the transformers, the, the substations, uh, to app the voltage of what a thousand houses produce in the neighborhood. It, it just doesn't work that way. And there is no way to store it because the batteries would be too large, too expensive, and with too short a lifetime to justify the investment. The whole thing is a hoax. And a hoax that is put money into the hands of a handful of people in the U.S. and the Chinese. Yeah, the, I mean, it's really funny. Like, like I don't know, this whole notion of, of like, you know, cheerfully doing business with people who are like quite open about um, aiming for your total destruction. I, yeah. I just, you know... Part of this stems from this notion that that we all want the same things, and and you know, um, we don't. We don't. We're, we're perfectly willing to let the Chinese and the Iranians live in peace if they stop like screwing with everybody. Um, no, they won't. But they they never will, will because no, like, and and as long as we are the stupid one in the equation, I mean, the Chinese produce their own energy with coal plants. Exactly. Exactly. They are the largest producers of coal plants in the planet. For every one we close, they open three. Yeah. And they use that energy to produce solar panels that we subsidize so that our people install this useless shit. And while we have ever more expensive and unreliable energy, they have ever cheaper and more reliable energy by using the technology we refuse to use for no good fucking reason at all. And we do this because a lot of people make money. Talking about the term in thieves. The, the, the companies that deal with this shit are all associated with the Democratic Party. Of course. The, the they, Democrats are the party of 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 gigantic combines of of massive, 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 you know, virtual nation states of of wealth and 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 power. And 
you know, it's really funny because the working class is, is shifting over to the Republicans. So what do the Democrats do? They start insulting all the people who used to support them. And it's like, that's a brilliant plan on, on getting elected. Like, like who, who have you not insulted yet? Um, there was a, there was a town hall meeting in Chicago where they broke into this spon spontaneous chant of go red, go red, go red. So, but they didn't, they didn't mean communism. They meant red Republican. No, they, they've been Republican. Yeah. It, it, have, it, have you ever been in a hailstorm in the Mojave? In the Mojave? No. Yeah, I have. You have? I have. I had to take refuge under a, a bridge in I-10, and I had to stay there because not only was I at risk of entirely losing my car and windshield and windows, it, it was impossible to control the car over the baseball-sized balls of ice falling from the sky. Why don't you install a large solar panel fire in the Mojave? You're going to have lots of sun. Until the next hailstorm. Well, no, I, I got caught in uh, in the middle of a tornado warning in, in Nebraska, and that was that was one of those situations where you you understand that mother nature is the most merciless mass murderer oh she's a bitch that was i had the radio on just i don't know why it was raining so hard that it didn't make a difference with my 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 wipers yeah it happens here all the time there was so much lightning that it was like strobe lights at a at a at a disco, and then all of a sudden this this piercing squeal came out, and this recorded voice said, "Tornado warning! Take shelter immediately." And there was a bridge, and I had just seen a video, just because I watch things explaining how dangerous it is to try and take shelter from a tornado under a bridge. Mm -hmm. So that's a work. There was nowhere to go except this, this little like diner. So I went to the diner and as I got out of my car, I could see that I was in the middle of a frog fall. I'd, I'd heard of these little, little tiny frogs about this. Yes. Bit. So, I'm dodging all the frogs and I go in and the place was run by two Iraqi immigrants and they were sheet white. And I said, where's the storm cellar? And they said, there is no storm cellar. We never should have left Baghdad. <laughs> there was a, a trucker, a young trucker. It was trucker. safer with ISIS than here. Well, there was a young trucker just sitting there and he had his, his, um, his feet up on the windowsill with his ankles crossed, and he had a cowboy hat. He looked just like that famous poster of James Dean or the, yes. the in the giant or whatever it is. I said, "What do we do?" And he said, "Pray, pray it don't hit us. That's all you can do." And took another sip off his bottled beer. So this thing, um, it was a, a Category Five, and it was over a mile and a half wide. <laughs> It, it missed us, but oh uh, god! And and they make fun of us for living in earthquake country. Yeah, uh, we don't you, have. You know that people don't know this, but Southeast Florida has more tornadoes than Kansas. Well, we live in earthquake country, but we don't have earthquakes every year like clockwork. You know, um, New York has it about every ten years. And, yeah, yeah. Every and every time people say in social media, unprecedented climate change, now we have earthquakes in New York. No shit, Sherlock. What? Climate change is causing earthquakes. Okay. Uh, apparently. Apparently. Good, good science there. Trust yes. the, science. the science is settled except for when it comes to gender issues and, and earthquakes and climate. And, um, and every other issue. And every issue. Settled science is a contradiction in terms. Yeah, yeah. 
If it is settled, it's not science. If it is science, it's never settled, assholes. No, no. I mean, there, there's, you know, they've, uh, they keep changing um, the story of, 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 you know, how humanity evolved. Um, I just saw something about um, this animal called the dire wolf, and it used to be thought that it was this enormous gray timber wolf that went extinct because the the megafauna went extinct and it turns out this thing now it it's it's a totally unique creature it's it's has no relationship with wolves um mm. i think it, its closest relative is is some weirdo um mouse or something there, there's there's this creepy um it's called a maned wolf. Maine is in the lion's mane. Yes. And it lives out on the plains. And like, did you ever see that painting that Salvador Dali did of elephants with these super long stilt legs? Yes. That's what the, the maned wolf looks like. It's it's this deformed thing. It's got a lion's mane and it's its legs are these spindly giant things so that it can it can walk above the, the savanna grasses. And when it walks towards you, it, it looks like a, a sheet of cardboard coming toward you because it's about this wide. And that's like the closest living relative to the dire wolf, but it has no relationship whatsoever to the gray wolf. And like, this is something they just determined like within the past two or three years. So um, they're constantly changing the story about what happened to Neanderthals. Um, there's there's another Neanderthal called something like Amarguensis or something, and and yes. Uh, so, the, like you said, the science is never settled. It's never settled. Now, 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 instead of having a single point in Africa for the origin of the species, uh, sorry, Muhammad Ali. Uh, there are multiple places where where human-like creatures appeared across the fucking planet. Yeah. Okay. Now, is this the definitive theory? No, we're still learning. Somebody's going to find a skeleton 20 years from now. They're going to make him change the theory. And, and that's what science is. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you keep receiving information. And you keep adjusting your theory to uh, the evidence at hand. Uh, but these assholes, they freeze their theory. And what they do is adapt the evidence that comes to the preset theory. And that's, that's you know, you, you, you start out with a preconceived notion. Trump is a con man. And then you, you look for anything that might bolster your preconceived notion and if there is nothing then you just you just make it up make it up you know um he's make it up. that's what these assholes do yeah he's calling and then, talking about thieves then they collect five hundred thousand dollars from a grant from the uh, uh you know the department of bullshit uh, or rather the secretary of bullshit in the department of energy and um and and they keep working on these bullshit theories constantly being fed by a bureaucracy that grants those grants to people who confirm their bias yeah yeah no and and it, it's a circular it's a, it's a circular bullshit hey well, okay, all of this is sort of, it's, it's, it's arrived at its peak of, of irrationality, and now it's starting to crumble everywhere. And, you know, um, I just saw this absolutely ghastly video of some 70-year-old public defender who is a transgender with size 95 triple F implanted. Breasts and an, an a voice, and an a voice from the dip. He sounds like somebody yeah, from yeah. a nineteen fifties horror movie. Yeah, and and you know it's like, 
I, I don't know. Um, it's it's so grotesque that that you know it doesn't need commentary. You just show it, and it. Yeah. It, it, and, and by the way, the size of those boobs, do you have any idea how many hours he spends inflating that shit? Well, also, I mean, just all of this stuff, it's so eerie because, okay, it's, it's being pushed by feminists, but it's a profoundly anti- Anti-woman thing. Oh, come on. It's a caricature. It, 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 it's a satire on women. And also, the message is that men make better women than women do. And yes, well, frankly, I don't want to speak for myself, but, but men make better women than feminazis. Well, yeah, I mean... I don't know. I, I, mean, I, I don't. I don't mean about the looks of the tits, though. Well, I mean, just all of this is just so. It's such a madhouse. I mean, it's it's truly a madhouse that that it none of it makes any sense. It's it's just this weird, constant hysteria and the 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 need. Okay. Um, you hear people on social media saying things like, okay, they, they just went through this kerfuffle where it was like men who like tomboys are secretly gay. And, and you know, um, and this is being said by leftist women who originally said women should be allowed to live how they want. And now they're, they're trying to dictate terms to women. You're not a real woman. You're not a real woman. You're not a real woman. Right. And... It's like, okay, how did you get from women should be free to choose their own way of life to now there's a, a preset, you know, um, there's rules. There's rules yes. to women. Um, don't you know that, that you are doing exactly the thing that you claim to oppose? Um, they don't care. They don't care. Um, and And there's no... There's no debating people like this. There's no discussion because it it, it no, leads lead to but it, it it goes beyond. So it's beyond discussion or argument. This public defender that you mentioned, I've seen videos and pictures of this thing, which is one of the ugliest creatures I have ever seen. Of course, I've never seen Bigfoot, so Bigfoot excluded the ugliest fucking thing on the planet. Not too long ago, if something like that applies for a job as a public defender, the moment they walk into the office, they walk out. Some cowardly, sniveling little shit in the public defender's office hire this fat face so as not to be accused of bias. Which is, of course, evidence of bias. I don't care how good or bad a lawyer it is. It's a fucking joke. Well, when the lawyer steals the show by his or her physical appearance alone and makes it impossible for you to... Um, think about anything except you know the lawyer then you're you're not doing the client any favors you're you're robbing the client of a of a of a um, an effective defense because like you said it's a public it's a public defender that we're talking about here yeah. and you know there, there's there's a new term out now called uh, main character syndrome where everybody views themselves as the main character in this narrative and this is this is a natural outlet to it, it's a it's a natural progression to this whole notion that there's no such thing as object, objective truth there's only personal narratives and so if this is your personal narrative then of course you become the main character and you know unfortunately um you're not really the main character that that 
you're the main character in your own head, but um, the world doesn't care that you think you're the main character. Um, time doesn't care that you're you think you're the main character. Um, and the whole notion we used to say justice is blind. Not right now in this country. There's no such thing. Um, you know. Uh, uh, by, by the way, uh, this is the end for YouTube today. Bye bye, you boob. And I'm not going to say anything more because, hey, what the hell? We've already said anything, everything we had to say about it.